the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Pete, this is not exactly a lighthearted weekend fair as we're talking about all these different subjects. You have the end to the Mideast peace talks. You've got ratcheting up of the problems in the Ukraine and the specter of an Iranian bomb. We'll get to all of this, but let's begin with Ukraine. Uh, the dynamic still the same. Russia just full speed ahead in, in its endeavors there with the uh, with the ethnic Russians living within the borders of Ukraine. Oh, I think so. I think uh, nothing that you know, Secretary Kerry, uh, our allies in Europe have said have really changed the fundamental dynamics uh, in the Ukraine. We've seen this now for the last three weeks. Uh, you know, we have put uh, the troops into Poland. We have put them into the Baltic states. But fundamentally, Russia holds a lot more cards than what Western Europe and the United States hold. And so this situation we can expect to continue as is because essentially the die has been cast, at least in terms of the United States. And um, I don't know if you call it strategic ambiguity, Pete, as much as we might call it strategic uncertainty. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's the strategic uncertainty. But really the... Uh, the things that America has under its control are so limited. Uh, and, you know, so many of the statements that Secretary Kerry, the president, have made, uh, I think, you know, don't carry any weight or have any impact uh, with Putin at all. He doesn't mind this uncertainty. It creates an environment uh, that enables him to move forward in Ukraine. It creates a certain level of discomfort. Uh, with the Baltic states and those types of things. All those things play into his favor, uh, and there's really no firm, united action that have, has caused him to reassess where he's going to go and what he's going to get done. Pete Hoekstra, uh, prior to having a chance to visit with you this morning, we were speaking with Alan Dershowitz about the now derailed peace process in the Middle East. The, uh, the coordination or the recognition and the, uh, the alliance, if you will, between the PLO and Hamas. Israel ended uh, any of those talks forthwith once that happened. In terms of your prior knowledge, and after all, since you used to have a good hand in intelligence and its oversight, was that an unexpected development or was that always kind of lurking in the background, this type of uh, announced alliance between the PLO and Hamas? Oh, I think alliances in the Middle East, they come and they go. This is not a surprise. Uh, they saw that the peace talks were collapsing. They saw this as a good opportunity for them to collaborate. Uh, they have a, they're now unified. They're a unified front against Israel. Uh, and the United States pushed them there. You know, the United States went into these peace talks uh, again. And I think this is pr part of the problem that we see today with this foreign policy. It is so based on personality. The president believed that he could change the relationships throughout the Middle East with Iran, with Russia, based on his personality and just not doing things the way that George Bush did them. Uh, Secretary Kerry thought that he could go into the Middle East uh, and the power of his personality and persuasion could bring uh, peace to the Middle East after you know 40 years of, of frustration. The bottom line is they were unrealistic expectations. Uh, the U.S. created those expectations, and here we are again looking at the specter of failure. And the interesting thing is, you know, the Palestinians, they didn't fail. Israel didn't fail. The U.S., the world perceives that it's one more failure, foreign policy failure by this president. Pete Hoekstra, so many times there are stories in the headlines that we hear about and then we fail to... Uh, to really review and uh, offer follow-up. One such case, uh, the drone attack last weekend, uh, or the several attacks in Yemen. W what transpired and, and what is your take on those drone attacks in Yemen last weekend? Well, J.D., I think, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I think it, you know, if you peel back a couple of the layers, which I think is what you're alluding to, what is the story that's not being told here? You know, typically when you, you're on the battlefield and you have a battle, and that's what happened last week, there were uh, reported three drone strikes, somewhere between 75 and 90 Al-Qaeda uh, militants uh, supposedly were killed. But you and I know that in every battlefield, uh, there's, a, there's a lot left, including wounded, in this case, wounded Al-Qaeda members. And I suspect that, you know, immediately after the drone attacks, or within a very short period of time, 
uh, the Yemeni army, pro Yemeni army, probably along with U.S. advisors uh, and perhaps some special operations forces, went to the scene of the attacks. And what they found is they found wounded Al Qaeda members, some of the leadership. Uh, we know that, or again through press reports, we know that some of the bodies were taken to Saudi Arabia for identification. But it's realistic to expect that we picked up some wounded, we probably captured some other people. The real question is, what happened to them? We know that in the past, under the Bush administration, uh, we would have taken those individuals into U.S. custody, we would have interrogated them, we might have brought some of them back to Gitmo. Under the Obama administration, they have no idea what to do with these individuals as they're captured. So in this case, my guess is they were given over to the Yemeni government, and I'll tell you, I bet these guys wish they were on their way to Gitmo and that they were not under the control and the jurisdiction of the Yemeni government. Uh, they'd much rather be in Gitmo under U.S. Uh, control than under the control of the Yemeni government. But the important thing is this is, and this is what you're raising, how come no one's asking the question, were there any survivors, were there any prisoners taken, and where did those prisoners go, and what's happening to them today? Uh, it, it boggles the mind, but as you laid this out, Pete, uh, we would expect the Yemeni government not exactly to be hospitable hosts of these al-Qaeda uh, uh, troops. And uh, you, you wonder about a situation, the euphemism of a mop-up, where the uh, Yemeni military might have come in and basically summarily executed the wounded that were there. That, that's within the realm of possibility, is it not? Uh, in that part of the world with those types of governments, absolutely, that's a possibility. But I don't think they would have summarily executed them. Uh, they would have gone, you know, they would have uh, interrogated them. They would have gotten all the information uh, that they could out of these individuals. Uh, and then they may have summarily executed them. But they would have gone after them for their intelligence value. The real failure here on the Obama administration is that with the use of drone strikes and these types of things, getting intelligence from al-Qaeda individuals and leaderships, leadership that's been captured, that's been gone. That's been gone for much of the last five years. It was a real element of the Bush strategy and the way that we collected intelligence. You can't get any better intelligence than human intelligence from people that you capture on the battlefield. Pete, a little less than a minute and a half left. I'd be remiss if I did not raise the specter of what, for lack of a better term, could be called the Iranian bomb. We have had those who have joined us within the last week saying that uh, they expect an announcement from Iran of nuclear weapons within the next two months. There is widespread uh, suspicions the Iranians already have a nuke. What do your instincts and your contacts in the intelligence world tell you, Pete Hoekstra? And I've written about this over the last three or four years. I think the folks that you're talking to that one of these days Iran's going to make an announcement uh, that they have a nuclear weapon or we're going to wake up and we're going to find out that they had a nuclear weapons test. I don't think that's unreasonable. The bottom line is U.S. intelligence has never had good insight into exactly what the status of the Iranian nuclear program was. The Israelis have a much better capability to do that. I disagree with, uh, you know, Alan, as much as I hate doing that. Uh, he's a very good guy and a friend of mine. Uh, but I'm not sure that Israel can stop before they get Well, we'll have to leave it right there, Pete Hoekstra. We appreciate your assessment of what's going on in terms of American intelligence and what's happening around the world. When we come back, trouble with the Veterans Administration. Stay tuned.